Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I wanted to take a close look at the Game Box. This is the Game Box Plus, but it is a different lineup in the jungle. This is the Game Box G11. Yeah, and it is super confusing. And you also can call it the Game Box, let's say Cube Box Edition, because they are like cube formed like boxes. This is the Game Box Plus Edition. And then of course we have like the Game Box X9. Like there is no like line like there's no like really like a line in this like there's no yeah you know it's kind of confusing there's a reason i wanted to like take a close look at these things and are they actually like worth picking up but are these like game box cube editions another like shenanigans situation or is actually something that is pretty damn nice to pick up we have seen a lot of like more of the same situation when it comes to these boxes but would not be surprised that this is also like happening with a couple of these boxes over here they're putting all kinds of weird stuff on the boxes just to make it interesting. Where they call this thing just the G11, but it comes with 3D game support. <laughs> so let's start with, let's see, Game Box Plus. We have two Game Box Plus. You know, it's kind of annoying, but also kind of confusing. So let's start with that. So let's remove this X9. This is also a new version. So let's start with this Game Box Plus, the blue edition. Let's see what we're actually going to get with this. So when it comes to these game boxes, there are so many versions out there. So it seems to me this is the one on 28 gigabyte, the English edition. I am guessing that is the reason why it says EN. So let's open it up and let's see what we're going to get inside the box itself. Ah, here we're going to get ourselves the this machine itself. It's this basically like square shape model. It comes indeed with a bullpen fan, so they are starting to learn from the mistakes when it comes to the Super Console X that it was like a passive cooled device. The dongle for the controllers, the controllers, USB card reader, HDMI. We do get a power supply. Hey, they sent me the right one, the European version. And of course the toilet paper edition manual or like, what the hell? Oh, this is basically the explanation how you need to add files. And that's the reason why they give you this two-to-do. I don't understand why they give you like a two-to-do freaking card really. This thing goes low, freaking slow. Especially want to load up a lot of files. And here a quick explanation about how everything works in two languages and that's it. All right, so the first controller test that we need to do is smell it. So man, these things smell chemical like burnt plastic. Like I don't know how chemical it is. And do you know, the fact is like when you're holding them for a very long time, it's going to be like smelling. The smelling of the control is going to be like on your hands and what the okay so that is the weirdest configuration i've ever seen when it comes to the freaking controllers look at the way this l1 is in here like man this feels so weird like is this just a normal thing or are they just freaking messed it up here no they just <laughs> They just completely like messed it up with the assembly. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, the joysticks feel okay. They do have like this rubber compound on top because the cheap ones mostly have like only plastic. The D-pad feels quite nice. Same goes for the ABXY. But the controls are super cheap feel. They work on two AAA batteries. Ah, here we have a going the on and off switch over here. But yeah. This is what we're going to get with the controllers. They smell like chemical and they are like very cheap to cheap cheap quality. But let's talk about the Gamebox Plus. Ooh, what is so plus about it? It's not a fan because it was also included in the previous model. Okay, so at the side we're going to get ourselves an AVO port, HD, DC input, on and off switch. That is very rare because not all of these things does have that. And optical out seems to be. They would have like two USB ports over here. And then we're going to get the micro SD slot. There's even like a quality seal. I'm going to still going to open it up. I'm guessing there are no screws. It's just click together. Like the shell is very flimsy, like very plastic and cheap. But later on, we'll do a quick tear down just to see how good or how bad this thing is. All right, so let's take a close look at the connectivity and how everything works. So to begin with, this works on the 12 volt one amp power supply. And this thing is like cheap to the cheap, cheap. Let's plug it in and let's power on the box itself. Ooh, it comes in a very nice red uh, lady. Oh, RGB inside. Okay, so I must say that it looks kind of cool. It gives you like the special intro, but... Hmm. 
Oh. oh man, like, what had this to do with the freaking God of War franchise? Nothing at all. <laughs> Alright, and after the movie you're going to get a quick loading screen, so I don't know what's the point is with this freaking intro, you can't even skip it so far, I know. But the teleportation magic box, so what you can see over here, it does give you like a screenshot, it's not actually like a video, but more like a picture. The box itself does have a lot of features like favorites, but we also have the option to search. So let's try that. And also we we're going to get a quick load, quick save, and of course, pressing start and double click select, we're going to exit to the main menu. In the left bottom corner, you can see which controller is navigating. Here you can see like it's basically blinking with player number one over there. But the menu layout is quite basic if you ask me. But first let's try the search by pressing the Y button, just to see what happens. Ooh, take some time to load it up. All right, need to don't need to press the freaking A button for that. I think I'm using the B that is going to be navigating. Yep, it is. Uh, let's see if we can find some games like Mortal Kombat. What I do like about it, I can navigate very quickly between the left and the right. And at the left side, we do have like the indication which system the game is for. Something that I'm missing with a lot of these systems. But here you can see we do have a lot of options there. And the reason why is quite simple. That is over here. When pressing the L1 or the R1, here you can switch between systems. So we have PlayStation Portable, Dreamcast, Naomi, Nintendo DS, N64, PlayStation 1, Arcade, Super Famicom, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Famicom, Game Boy Color, and the list goes on and on and on. I must say like that is quite interesting that the system does have support for so many different devices. Sometimes you don't see that, you do see like a couple of them, like on these cheap boxes, but not that much. So it's quite interesting. And here we're going to get the favorite list. And I'm really curious if this Ghost of Sparta is actually running. Alright, so let's choose the PlayStation Portable game, The God of War. And the reason why, because it's the most demanding game. And I don't know what kind of emulator they are using, because it's like being in a glitch fest. Look at this, like everything is like messed up. Beside the point we're going to get like some choppy emulation performance, it's not going to be even decent enough to enjoy. Look at this. This is the God of War, or let's say the God of Glitching. That's the thing what it is. Woo! Glitch away! I kill you with my glitch swords! Woo! The chains on kinkiness. Yeah! Ooh, ooh, ooh. Absolutely garbage. Okay, I just wanted to do a quick test with another game. And I've noticed like there are some weird lines in my display. And no, my monitor isn't broken. This is just how it is, you know? Let's see if the gameplay is going to be any decent enough to enjoy. The lines have been vanished now. Hmm. You can hear that it started in the beginning, but... Yeah, you can s just hear it sort of like crazy. But you see, like, some of the games are playable with some glitches. Okay, I'm curious about Sega Dreamcast, how that will run on this device. Because the PlayStation Portable is not a great success, so let's see how that runs. Ooh. Decoration is one of the more demanding games, so... Let's see if I can do any moves whatsoever. Yeah, so the D-pad is responsible on this thing. But you can just hear it has so much problems with this freaking game. But the reason I wanted to try this game, because most of these cheap boxes do also have an issue with this. Audio is completely messed up. Something I don't test out a lot, but I just wanted to see how this is running. 
I know there's a lot of people really like to play some DS on these devices. The reason I don't like it is just basically because these games were made for freaking two displays. But if you want to play some NDS, I seem to be working just fine on this. And that's what you're going to see with a lot of these cheap boxes that you can play a lot of games, but mostly like it's going to be like the less demanding games. Look at PlayStation Portable Dreamcast. If you grab a game that is demanding, the game will struggle due of like having not enough power. Or they're just re running like say crappy emulators to make it like one big glitch fest. Next up, N64. I already tell you, like, it's going to be a mixed performance or a mixed bag, simply because, like, N64 is just a really difficult, like, say, emulator to get it running on a cheap box. But you will have some games that run just fine, like this one. Fun fact, like, I couldn't even find Cruise in the USA, and I know, like, that game is pretty damn difficult to emulate, and you will have problems with these cheap boxes, so... Alright, so let's try the PlayStation 1 game. Because Bloody Roar 2 is a game that's really demanding, and we'll basically see if we can play all PlayStation 1 games. And uh, most of these chip boxes will run it on native resolution. Wolfie time. Okay, it's clear for me that they're using these weird filters again. Alright, so let's see how this will run on the box itself. Because with MAME, basically Mortal Kombat series is one of the best games to test and benchmark on this. If they're using enough power in combination with the right emulator you can play it and what you can see over here it runs very well crap wrong button wasn't that a movie you can shoot backwards or something like that no idea going to lose oh yeah Okay, there's one system I want to try out when it comes to 16-bit or the low stuff. See, the low-end stuff will run just fine, but mostly with Mega Drive, there's going to be messing it up because of the audio. Well, it seems to be that they didn't mess it up. Let's check the sound effects. Nope, everything works just fine. So, finally, they managed to do it right. Also, this uses this weird HD filter, so it looks like pixelated. D-pad and the Alex seem to be working, but... The thing is I'm noticing when I'm trying to walk around, the D-pad is not that great. You need to push it really hard so it makes it less convenient to play with this controller. Somehow for fighting games not going to be an issue, but for the beat-em-ups, no. The D-pad is absolutely garbage. Alright, so let's do a quick teardown. I did had one thing wrong at the beginning of this video. There are some screws under the feet, so it's not like always click together. Oh no! Here goes my freaking glue or my double sided tape but when you're looking at this box and the performance yeah i was not like really surprised by it simply because i've reviewed so many of these things here on the channel and when you're going to get into the really budget stuff you're going to get a really old specs and you will see it when i'm opening it but i'm just curious how they basically assemble this thing so that's the reason why i'm going to do in this assembly so let's remove the four screws and the thing that did surprise me was that we had a lot of systems that could be played on this and that is something you don't see very often. Most of the time they go up to, let's say, PlayStation, they will slap in some PSP or some Dreamcast, but they also avoid a lot of other stuff because I don't know why, but especially when it comes to the simple stuff like handhelds. So the Plus Edition is indeed an improvement of the older version. All right, I think I get myself some prior tools or can I use my nails for this? Yeah, I can use my nails for this. Well, nah, get my prior tool. Because there's a lot of room left in here, so it's just the only thing we need to do. Click it out. All right. Uh, are there any screws in here? No, not really. We need to remove this. That was very recommended to remove the SD card. Otherwise, you can sometimes mess it up 128 gigabyte oh i thought it was saying nokia but no there isn't 
Okay, so this is basically what are we going to get in the inside when it comes to the main board. It feels quite hot after using for a very short time period. Let's remove the plug for the fan itself. Damn it, I think they glued it on here. There's no re-specification. They're still using this greenish board. And I mean with this, like, it's looking very old. But it doesn't need to be the case. I see a lot of numbers on this thing. It's absolutely crazy if you think about it, like, how much numbers. But there was no indication, like, when this thing was made. So one thing I do notice, like, this thing weighs quite heavy. And there's a big cooling cooling plaque of metal on here and basically they are using this on top and it's not really sucking the hot air out it's just blowing fresh air inside but the downside to this is there is no way or there's not a lot of ventilation holes because these holes are for the leds over there so it's all fun they like sucking fresh air but there is need to be an exhaust when it comes to that but yeah for the cooling it's okay like nice metal sheet on it I'm guessing they glued it on because there was no movement whatsoever. Sometimes you have these double-sided thermal paste stuff, but that is not the case over here. But yeah, this is what you're going to get in the inside. There was nothing much. The fan is just a universal fan. They only put it in here, like with holds back with one screw. But that's it. That's uh, the only thing that we're going to get. It's even called the Ultra Fan. Ooh. The way you're looking at the chipset is going to be the Amlogic S905X that runs on 2 GHz. Combined with the ARM Mali 450MP8, 2 GB of RAM, 60 GB of storage and of course the TF card or the microSD card is 128 GB. So specification wise it's not something really fancy, it's just your typical super console -like stuff that we have seen before, only slightly improved when it comes to cooling and the casing. Okay guys, so the conclusion is quite simple. I already mentioned some pros and cons to this device in the video itself, but let's sum it up. To begin with the controller, uh, I can really can recommend it simply because this thing is like f smelling like chemical burned plastic. This cannot be good for you to hold this for a very long time. Besides that, like the D-pad is rubbish. Like this thing is unplayable, especially for beat em ups. So the system itself, it surprised me simply because of the basically the stuff that it can be played on. And yeah, I didn't really cover the old stuff because most of the time the old stuff will run just okay. And because I just wanted to see what we can benchmark on this. So yeah, let me know if you want to see more of those like older stuff. Let me know in the comments. For the beside that, like the game box plus is absolutely plus because it has capable of running more stuff. But performance wise, it's not that great simply because let's be honest, like playstation portable a lot of games are unplayable and dreamcast it will run a couple of games but you can see where the limitations are so this is basically what we're going to get with the game box plus so if you want to see more videos or do some more videos about the game boxes and it will be great to see you in the next video Alright, so the next one is another Gamebox Plus. This is the 20,000 in one, you know, like, alright, need to believe that. No. Yeah, this thing does come in two different variations, or better said, like two, like multiple variations. 32 gigabytes, 64, 128 gigabyte, with like even two different controllers, or. Yeah, I think this is also like different controller setup, or this wired and this with wireless. Then we have like the different plug and stuff like that. And also it comes in different colors. Okay, so what are we going to get? An color box, USB cable, receiver, machine, the wireless handle, certificates, okay, instruction, micro TF, and the HDMI cable. But okay, so let's check it out. So it's a very nice cubic, cubic looking box itself. So here we do get like the system itself. And the first impression is the thing weighs quite heavy. So this is a brand new company. This is called. Via Nava, something like that, or is it Via Va? I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm just going to be honest. Like those names are going to be butchering them all freaking day. Game box, 12 volt, one amp is needed for powering on. Ah, we do have like the USB jungle. I'm thinking this is like the 
one dongle to controller situation we have seen it before inside already mentioned why we're going to get so the power adapter is absolutely like flimsy oh, and of course we're going to get ourselves yep the chinese place to knock off controllers and oh man this smelled like bird plastic uh, the weird thing is like do you know when you're having these controllers you can like see very f quickly if they're like okay quality to begin with we have like the joysticks not only the feel but that it got like this nice rubber compound to it when you're pressing the abxy and basically moving around like this you can already feel it you are like okay quality the d-pad is feeling very nice it feels very loose i really like it but because most of them are very sturdy the shoulder bot is another way, great way to check it out, especially when it comes to the L2 and the R2. These are like, thing okay, so they are not like the best quality, especially when you're looking at, yeah, the overall quality, like the, the cheap feel and the smell, because the smell is freaking awful. Ugh. Like I said, it's an Android box, so it comes with a manual, but not like the Android box manual. We do have like a very cheap, horrible remote. And then we have like a very extended manual. I must say like this is a very thick one, like with an explanation, but nothing really fancy. Here you can see like what you can do with it. It seems to be like we also have one with Xbox controllers because they're showing it over here. They show you like what you can play with it, but let's take a close look in the inside later on with a teardown because I wanted to see what kind of specs this thing has. The specifications tells a lot nowadays. So if you're having like your typical S905 X or L chip, you're not going to get amazing performance when it comes to the higher end stuff. All right guys, so let's take a close look at the game box itself. What are the connections and what are we actually going to get with this? So over here, we're going to get two USB connections for the controllers. And at the back, we're going to get yourself the RG45 ethernet connection, HDMI, the AV out, the TF card, and the input for the power supply. So let's take a close look what kind of brand they're using. They're using an, yeah, like a cheap brand, like always, a 128 gigabyte. The consideration, if you're having these cards, is always like very, rec it's just recommended to boot back, back them up because they will die off in the end. Yeah, they're really bad quality. Okay, I just needed to point out, there's one thing I really like about this box, the improved. It's a little bit of a novelty, but it's pretty damn cool. So here you can see like the game box basically lights up. It's always the question like what kind of firmware are we going to get, but also what kind of theme they're using. And with this game box, the theme looks very cool. The unfortunate thing is that they removed a lot of options and this means you can like configure controls, but there's not a lot of tinkering you can do with it. So what you can see over here, it runs on ME like 4.5. But nevertheless, let's take a close look at what are we going to get. So basically, there also shows a lot of, like, say, platforms that this will not support perfectly. That's something to take consideration. These boxes are just fine for 8-bit, 16-bit stuff. But when you're looking at the compatibility, I think that is pretty interesting. Unfortunately, if there's something wrong, it's going to be a lot of, like, say, tinkering needed to get this thing to work, simply because they locked out the user, or you and me, who buys this. A little bit weird in my opinion, but I basically want to test out, I just want to go into the deep dive of like say, more demanding stuff like N64, PlayStation, PlaySport, well, just to see how it actually runs. Okay guys, so let's start off with a Bloody Roar 2, with PlayStation 1. I say most of these devices will run PlayStation 1 very well, depending on if they configured everything correctly. Especially when you're transforming into the beast. There we're going to get the hiccups most of the time. But when we're pressing select and start at the same time, we do get like the quick menu of retro arc so we do have the option to make a quick load quick save and we can implement cheats if you want to all right so next up let's try some jet 2 on dreamcast it's an absolutely great game to benchmark just to see how everything runs Oof. you can hear that here we're going to get the point that it struggles sometimes
So it's playable, but you can hear that it stutters here now and then. Of course, if you're going to choose like a less demanding game, you don't have the issue, but... Okay, so as I'm in the menu, it runs on 20 FPS. Frame skip is absolutely like enabled, you can just see it. I just wanted to try some, just a, a basic game that I know it's going to be running okay. Because God of War Wipeout doesn't run at all. But yeah, you can see like it runs at 50 FPS. Like, why should you add something like this to it? Goes up to 30. In my opinion, they can just rather like remove the PlayStation Portable in general because it's absolutely garbage. Wow, I got my ass kicked whoopsies. Alright, so next up let's try some Golden Eye on the N64 and it's going to be like glitch freaking nightmare already. You know, beside that it has like a lot of glitches. N64 always will be a problem on these cheap boxes. Some lunch titles will work. I have no idea which button to shoot. I actually shoot the guy in the balls and he still stands. So unfortunately we do have like a lot of glitches because the game seems to be running just okay. Man. Come on, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Oh man. Alright, so next up I wanted to try some Mortal Kombat 2 on MAME. It's a game that doesn't run on a lot of boxes, including Pandora's box. Crap, don't know what to do with my buttons. So the weird thing is like the controller is absolutely unpleasant to play with because there are some sharp edges to the controller, but... But okay, so Mortal Kombat 2 seems to be running fine on arcade, but take consideration is that with these systems, like Killer Instinct doesn't run at all. Then we're going to take a close look at the X9. So yeah, the other one's the G11, so I'm guessing this is better. So we're going to take a close look at the X9 just to see what are we going to get with this. And is this thing actually good, you know? Oh boy. So back in the day we started with Super Console X and I must say that nowadays we do get some weird looking but also interesting when it comes to the software game boxes. So this is a completely different line, this is nothing to do with Super Console X but what we're going to get is this tiny box. It comes including a fan so they try to improve it. We do have like two USB ports, then we're going to get ourselves some connection at the back with a yip and an off switch. The input for the power supply, we do have HDMI, RG45 for the internet connection and I'm kind of weird having these Android boxes with AV out but most of the time this doesn't even work when you're using the game system on your old school CRT. Then we have like the dongle for the controllers, underneath we're going to get ourselves the all famous PlayStation controls, this time we're going to get us like the lightweighted version without rumble. They work on two AAA batteries on and off switch and I must say they have like better quality joysticks because with the cheap to the cheap cheap we're going to get ourselves like non rubberized joysticks. The d-pad feels a little bit sturdy but it's overall okay, the same goes for the A, B, X, Y button and not to forget, ah oh, they smell chemical, yeah. Then we do have like our typical power supply and then we have like an HDMI cable and yes, the toilet paper manual with some basic explanations in two languages. Yes, it's kind of funny, like they're talking about an Xbox controller and a PlayStation controller and they have like an USB stick. Like what the hell? I think there's a universal toilet paper manual like always. <laughs> now, something I really need to point out is the fan itself. This thing makes quite a lot of noise. I will let you hear it, what I mean. It's not really annoying, but it is noticeable when you're basically like browsing through the game list. But let's, what about the game list? Let's take a close look at that. Another thing is quite interesting and weird at the same time. There is no way of adding a CF card inside or a micro SD card. So what you're going to get is this card reader. This is just an USB 2.0, so not like even the fastest one. And you're going to plug it in here. And here we have like the SD card. SD card? 
it's like an always like a non brand. You do have like different, let's say, kind of sizes, but let's power it on because if you're going to boot it up without, nothing seems to be working. Oh, there we go. Vacuum cleaner sound starting up. Yeah. But let's take a close look at the main menu and what you're going to get. Personally, I really love the looks of this. And the reason why, because it just has like this very nice thumbnail at the right and everything looks very clean. And I like just like it. Like you do have like the hyperspin wheel, but normally like it's kind of messy, but now you can see everything is like looking very nicely. All right, so when you're going to click on a certain thing like favorites, we have like this very nice list over here that basically shows only the game and the name. So that's basically what you're going to get with the menu. We do have like a support up to PlayStation Portable, but I can't tell you it's like, it's going to be a mix already when it comes to performance. But for make sure, let's test it out and let's see what we're going to get. When pressing some select and start, I managed to get into the menu. You can see this thing runs on a modified Amiga Alec because that's the thing that they're doing nowadays. That's version 4.3. It's kind of weird. I don't know it's like it's going to be like the original deal, but it seems to be having support for Sega Saturn and stuff like that. Just start off with some basic stuff over here. Just to check out how the soundtrack are sounding. Everything sounds like it should be. Let's boot up the game. Crap, always messing it up. Get to the chopper. Of course, we have reached the point that these, like say, 16-bit games will run just fine. I do see there was also some kind of weird filter over it. Whoop. When pressing select and start, what I do like about this is that we do have the option to enable cheats. We have made a quick load quiz save if you want to. Restart, resume. So normally we do have like ME like when pressing select and start, it will basically go into, let's say, the main menu. But we'll have the option basically to shut down over here. It will reboot. But we have the option to make a quick load quick save, so that's very convenient. No turbo mode so far, I can see. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now where we're going to get into the N64, like all of those cheap boxes, we do have some limitations here. The more demanding games will not run very well. And also, I did hear some stutters in this game too. See how everything has been configured. Joystick is correct. You have some weird, go weird things going on with the shadow. That's not like it should be. Let's see any stutters. But a lot of games are playable, so that is very cool. So with these new generational boxes, we do have the option to play some Sega 32X, a super neat system. We do have the original games and system, it's so cool to have original, but absolutely ridiculous expensive. So if you just want to experience it, this is just a great way to do so. Still, like, the Sega 32X has so much potential, but unfortunately they completely messed up with Sega there. For example, if you're going to look it up, there are even like Doom, let's say remakes, like Doom Resurrection on the 32 weeks that looks almost or maybe like even that's just as great than another Sega Saturn. Having great options like two player co-op. And again, 2 x I really love the hardware. I hope the community can make more like ports or homebrew games, hacked games that have like basically unlocks the full potential of 32 weeks. All right, so next up, let's try some Sega Naomi. I didn't notice like there was no Sega Dreamcast on it. Kind of interesting to see that they didn't have that option, but doesn't matter. Let's try this. Okay, it looks like it doesn't do anything. Let's see how it runs. I also tried this game, particularly because the three-dimensional games will struggle more on cheaper boxes than compared with the other versions, like two-dimensional games. Don't see weird glitches going on. All right, let's fight. I'm getting my ass kicked like always. You do can hear some hiccups in the music, so it doesn't run like stable 60 FPS. Next up, Sega Saturn with Cyber Speedway. I'm really curious how this three-dimensional game will run because they had some 
sometimes we do have like some limitations. Let's choose free mode. Upload versus CPU. And let's boot it up and let's see what we're actually going to get with this. We're going to get loading times. Loading times. The question remains, of course, like how will this run? I did an overall like and test with this game on different systems. Beside the minor hiccups, you can just see we do get like some okay performance. We cannot really see the FPS, but in overall, like it's playable. And take consideration if you just want to have like a basic RPG that runs way better than this. I don't know if people like played this back in the day, but I personally don't really like this. It feels like a ripoff from Wipeout. I do like the music. Ooh, we got turbo. Ooh. Okay, so with PlayStation 1, they completely messed up the controls, like B, or where like circle is crossed, like it's absolutely kind of completely messed up. Oh my, li listen to this. If you're hearing this, you already know what's going to be happening. It runs like shit! Yeah, that'll fun a game, but I think it's going to be like running horribly. Take consideration that like, this is just a system that is really demanding. So this reason just allowing to pick up this game just to see. Yeah, okay. It is playable in kind of a way, but it's running sometimes really slow. Yeah. I think my word back, it's not playable. It runs like shit. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this, how we this will run on the PlayStation Portable side, because it's going to be quite challenging. But here you can see that it seems to be running just fine. Take consideration, this is Tekken 5, so it is less demanding, I've noticed. So we do get some okay performance when it comes to PlayStation Portable. For the cheap to the cheap to your box, it really is. I just wanted to show you what I do like about it. That when pressing select to start, we're going to get in the PPSS PP emulator. And it's just amazing. Like you can just actually like mess around with the settings if you want to. You can see over here, frame skipping has been set to off. So that's quite interesting to see. So it's interesting, like in general, like what you can do with it. And again, like with the can make a quick load, quick save. So that's very convenient for some games. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, of course, when you're going to play God of War, change of kinkiness, you're going to get some different performance. But what we can do is pressing select and start, going to the game setting menu. I said I'm going to the game setting menu. Okay, wicked, very nice. But here you can see like it already has been set to frame skip. For <laughs> frame skip too, so it's absolutely crazy. Here we have like maybe some option we can change out. We can see like they did mess around a little bit with it. So we can set it maybe one to one. Just we can mess around with this to get a little bit better performance and overall. But let's try it out and just see how it actually going to be working. Let's put this on off. The next thing we can change out is the rendering. Then we're going to force it on original rendering yeah, scale. So that's the thing that we can do just to see if we can get some actually okay performance. All right, so let's show how the performance is when you're going to actually play a game like this. Yeah, putting this to frame skip two, yeah, it will be slightly better, but let's be honest, this is just completely unplayable. Frame skip one, it's okay. I can live with something like that, but this is absolutely garbage. Nope, 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 nope. I just want to go in back a little bit in time with some meme. Simply because I just wanted to see how Mortal Kombat 1 or Bethesda 2 is running. 2 is a little bit more demanding what I've seen of the cheap boxes. So let's start with 2 and just see what happens. He's going to shoot. Yes, I knew it. I'm going to get my ass kicked here. <laughs> but the game seems to be running just fine. Oh man, I hate these cheesy freaking computers. So like they don't really dodge my freaking attack normally. Come. The deep end on this controller is pretty damn good. Just going to do it like this. Alright, I'm done with it. 
Last but not least, let's take a close look at the Gamebox G11. So here it also shows like it comes with Android 9.0, so you can actually use this thing like an Android box. Take consideration, it's like old school stuff, so don't expect to have like high gaming performance. I did like the look of the box itself. I must say when I'm ordering these things, it's always like super confusing. But when I order it, I knew like this is something new. But is it exciting? Mm, I don't know. Weird, you know, it makes no sense whatsoever. But let's see what's inside the box. We do get like the plastic fantastic over here with the box. The first thing I'm noticing is like it feels quite heavy, so I'm curious is this any good or is it just a piece of metal inside? They'd love to do that. 12 volt power supply is needed. Really love the look of this thing made of fully plastic. But let's take a close look what's more inside the box. All right, so we do get ourselves a card reader over here with an SD card. I don't know what's kind of an SD card, SD card it is. Oh, this is the one on 128. Okay, that's interesting. Did he even like put it in? All right, so we have the power supply, cheap to the cheap one, the controller, remote because it's an Android device, HDMI cable, and another controller. Ah, and of course, the toilet paper manual, the Deluxe Edition, because this is a very good looks glossy one. Okay, so they also sell it like a game stick, because those things are like absolutely like crazy how many of these things there are. Okay, so here we have like some information about the specifications. The parameter. So this thing or one of those things are the G5, G7, G9. So there's a full lineup. I did review a couple of them. Comes with a Gore-Tex A9, 2 gigabyte of RAM. So that's interesting. Most of them have like 1 gigabyte in the past. Here it supports like all kinds of emulators up to PlayStation Portable. Got a 3.5 earphone, stereo headphone out. It's also something you don't see very often. And then we have like an AV out function, but that doesn't work always. Uh, and overall, like, cool that we can use a headphone. But besides that, there's not a lot of information. It even shows over here we can play some Sega Saturn. <laughs> kind of funny, like, show, they're showing here a PlayStation controller and they're showing here an Xbox controller. That's some freaking confusing things. All right, so the controllers are okay quality. I must say they have an okay D-pad. I must say that normally we do have like the cheap to the cheap controllers, but that comes without any rumble. Yeah, it's okay. Let's I will give it like an maybe six, seven out of nine. With like the battery compartment. Let's put some batteries in. And let's take a close look at this bad boy. So at the side we're going to get ourselves two USB ports for connecting some hardware. At the back we're going to get an HDMI out and then we go get an AV out and yeah the AV out take consideration they don't always work with Amy Alec. Then we do have like the RG45 LAN function, the input for 12 volt, the on and off switch yeah that is also not common with these things. Nothing over here and nothing over here. So but that explains one thing why there is a freaking card reader with an SD card in it. Normally they always like add the SD card with it with the software so you can just basically boot up and add your stuff. But guess what? This is a completely different way to play and I don't know if I'm going to like this. So what we think what we need to do is like we need to plug this thing in. So we need to use up one freaking port. We need to plug in the SD card and then we can boot up the software. Okay, that is pretty damn messed up if you ask me. Okay, it doesn't even go in all the way. Alright, so let's boot it up and let's see if it's even going to boot up. Everything seems to be working like it should be. So it takes quite a long time, but the first thing that we'll see is the game box intro. It's a modified MUL, like I'm guessing it is. And the next thing that we're going to get is this wicked intro with all kinds of characters that we maybe know of. And just to be honest, like I, I don't know where the intro is from. And yeah, this is basically what we're going to get. It takes quite a lot of time, like say a minute or so, before we're going to be booted up the system in general. But that's it. So with the first generation of Android boxes that were modified with ME Alec, also called Super Console X. So what you can do with those things in combination with this one is not going to be a big of a difference. Because the hardware itself, it's going to be this more, more of the same. Alright, but when you're looking at the menu itself, here we're going to get a quite interesting menu. We do have like support for many systems. We're not going to test them all out simply because the old school stuff, think about 8-bit, 16-bit stuff that runs all just fine. But I just want to see what we can do when it comes to PlayStation 1, PSP and Dreamcast. And they also mentioned somewhere Sega Saturn in the manual. But I don't see it over here. Or did I already miss it? Oh, ah, there it is. So we're going to try that one out. Let's, uh, let's take a close look at the menu itself. And I mean, this menu. 
Over here, we can even like mess around with the settings if you want to. So to begin with, we do have like ME Alec 4.3 installed on this. Now, if this is a real ME Alec, I'm guessing it is because it does have Sega Saturn. Pressing the wrong button again. Here we can mess around with the video mode. Here you can see it's set to 720p. Mm, start up boot. We can even change it out to emu emulation station and retro arc. But again, you need to deep dive into this with a tutorial to show basically all of the options and what it is capable of. Just wanted to see out of the box what are we going to get and how it does it play. Okay, so the people don't believe me, so let's take a close look at some Alien Storm for the Mega Drive, or known as Genesis by many of you. The great thing is like these freaking boxes can actually like play the Mega Drive very well. But we do have like a lot of Sega versions nowadays that have so many issues with the audio. Uh, what the hell is going on? Controller! Oh man, my controller goes apeshit over here. Let's see, let's reset my controller, let's reset my controller. Alright, reset it. Ah, oh, finally, it does work. Yeah, I just wanted to show you what happened here. So, it seems to be like my controller went ape shit, but let's take a close look at the gameplay. Dead Alive 2 with Flycast, original resolution, what I understand of. I did see him stuttering, but let's see if we can play some more. So far, so good. You can always hear like some stutters when you're bashing into the freaking wall. Alright, so next up let's try Cyber Speedway, if I'm saying it correctly. A game I personally never played as a child, so I was quite surprised to see this. For me this, so this is not sound, but mostly like feels like a wipeout ripoff. Let me know in the comments, did you ever play this game? Back in the day, you can see like it glitches a little bit or it's just normal in the game. But seems running on a pretty damn good FPS. I find it quite interesting to see like these cheap boxes are able to run Sega Saturn nowadays, but I think this will be like the maximum it can handle. And it will be mixed performance like with N64. So talking about that, so let's try a little bit of N64. Okay, so when it comes to N64, we have like some mixed performance. Funny thing is, like I couldn't even test out Cruising the USA because that is a game that doesn't run on these boxes. Same like, I think it was also Golden Eyes, some other really demanding ones. But you do still have like a lot of fun ones you can play. For example, Buck Bumble. Oof. But you can see like it does even struggle with this. Let's see how the gameplay is. Okay, let's see, so joystick right, left, all right, so they mapped it over there, same function, all right, the A is basically like acceleration, so basically when you're playing a game like this, it works very well with the PlayStation controller. Oh man, they messed it up with the PlayStation part. You can hear like the audio is not very good. The gameplay seems to be working just fine. The D-pad has, has a great feel for the fighting game, I almost want to say, yeah. Only there's no background music. But this needs some reconfiguration. If you ask me. But nevertheless, 
So basically, this is what you're going to get. PlayStation Ad runs pretty damn good if you're going to set everything up like it should be. Alright, PlayStation Portable. So, you know, and I know, and especially the people basically like watching my videos all the time, you know, this is not going to be running very well. A lot of people didn't know, now you know. I know you're thinking, Wicked, what you're talking about, she's running just great. Yeah, maybe some hiccups here and there, we can play the game. But, you know, like, it has been, like, only already set to one times resolution. And, of course, frame skip. And a lot of demanding games. It's the same story like my N64, they don't run very well. Think about God of War. A lot of my Wicked family have been watching my videos and yep, it's more of the same that happens all the time. But I'll find it quite interesting to see what are they actually going to like, you know, like what they're making. Because they do have some minor like upgrades here and there, but the overall like shape performance is mostly the same with some differences between the software. Yeah, let me know which one do you like. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell, becoming the Wicked family and it would be great to see you in the next video.